sold? Oh, soldering. Happy Monday. Happy to announce that it is officially beanie season in Las Vegas. Quack. This is Bryce. And Bryce is going to explain to us today uh, what what this is. Wait, I am? Yes. Well, this is a smoldering, a soldering skit. A smoldering skit? <laughs> I don't know. A soldering kit. And I don't know what else to say. All right, Tom's. So this is a... Uh, <laughs> This is the soldering kit that I got. Oh, it's soldering. <laughs> so that I can repair my Cine Whoop drone. Um, apparently, this is a lot more, I don't know, this is, there's a lot more that came in this that I was aware of, to be honest. What? This is uh, apparently a desoldering something, desoldering braid, tip cleaner, just the tip. This is the actual soldering of metal, whatever you call metal it. Metal wire. No idea what this is. Removal alloy, I don't know. I don't know any of this stuff. And then this is the actual- it's a fast chip. Yeah, this is the actual <laughs> soldering iron. So one of the goals this week will be to figure out how this thing works and what all this stuff actually is so that I can finally, finally repair the Cindy Whoop. So, um, a fun game me and Bryce have come up with, it's called Drone Tag. Drone Tag is um, tag a with game, the drone. it's Tag with the Drone. <laughs> My it's, it's, it's safe for the most part. Make sure we're recording. Once the drone starts moving, then you can go. Wait, and go! Oh, oh. sorry Tums. <laughs> oh God! Oh god! Oh! 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 So lately I've been playing around with this uh, technique to introduce a little bit more contrast into some of my photos. I'm finding lately that I can't get the, the look that I'm really going for in Lightroom alone. I found that I need to, uh, if I really wanna get that kind of, the contrast that I really want, I gotta open the photos into Photoshop and do a little bit more. But I figured out a technique to kind of create that high contrast, semi-desaturated look that I personally enjoy. So I figured I'd show you how to do that in Photoshop. So this was the thumbnail image from my most recent podcast, which by the way, I host a podcast every Sunday live on YouTube. You should check it out. It's called the Hayfield Digital Podcast. I digress. But this was the photo I took for the thumbnail. The first thing you want to do is just apply your typical, usual exposure and contrast adjustments so that it looks passable. Next thing you want to do is go over here and you want to duplicate the layer by hitting control J. And with this layer selected, you want to go up to filter. No, edit. No image adjustments, black and white. And we're just going to convert it to a black and white image. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the blend mode of that now black and white layer to overlay. Now, when you turn this on uh, at first, it's obviously going to look way too intense. So what you can do is just grab the opacity slider here and turn this down until you reach a desirable level. If you want the uh, effect to be more intense, obviously crank it up. If you just want a little bit of it, you can bring it down. But let's say, let's bring it right around the 35% mark. If you turn that uh, black and white layer off and back on, you can see the difference. So you get all this really uh, nice looking contrast in there. And this style obviously isn't for everyone, but if you're kind of looking for a way to beef up the uh, contrast in your photos, this is a good way to do it. <laughs> Said it was beanie season. Gotta rock some new beanies. Trim the beard. So I wanted to touch a little bit on why I'm going back to vlogging on this main channel. And if this is something you're not interested in, just go to this time marker here and you can skip all this. I have been struggling for a, a number of months now with what I was going to be doing on this YouTube channel. I have my podcast thing on the side. I've got a day job. I've got some other projects that I'm working on. Uh, and I think as a result, all of those things 
kind of led me to, it forced me to put this channel on hold for a little while. But in addition to that, I didn't know where I wanted to go with it. I didn't want to get pigeonholed into just doing tutorials. But outside of tutorials, I wasn't really sure what kind of content I wanted to focus on or the format or basically I was just dealing with some extreme creative block. I found myself overthinking every decision I was making. I would come up with ideas, I would write them down, I would get excited about them, and then when it came time to, to start to do them, I just, I just couldn't get myself to pick up the camera. But eventually, I realized that I could either just continue to do that and not post anything ever, or I could at least do something that could kind of get me back into the habit of, of using the camera and, and recording things and just making videos in general. So basically what I'm trying to do is just pick up the camera and vlog for at least a little bit every day, or at least Monday through Friday, and then I would edit on Saturday and Sunday, and that would give me the opportunity to have a new video up and posted each each Monday basically. And I basically wanted to wipe the slate clean. I wanted to start with a very simple format, um, nothing too formal or too, what's the word? Premeditated, I guess. I just wanted to be able to pick up the camera and document some of the things that I was working on at the moment. And hopefully within that, there would be some value that whoever was watching the video, you know, they could take some, some things away from that, some tips and tricks whether it's a video editing tip or photography or something related to FPV, whatever it may be. But the goal is not just to make these just kind of your run-of-the-mill vlog, it's to actually provide some kind of value. And then over time, the plan is to obviously kind of mold and morph and change and evolve this type of format into hopefully something a little bit better. Who knows, I may get bored with this format after a few weeks and move on to something else, I don't know. But what I do know is that at least I'm excited about picking up the camera again and editing and making videos and vlogging and that's really ultimately what I was looking for. I wanted to kind of get that spark back and it's slowly starting to make its way back into my life. Yeah, my God. Yes. Yes. Tom Tom agrees. Yes, it does. <laughs> So that's basically it in a nutshell. Uh, and I guess we're just gonna see how, <clears throat> I guess we'll just see how it goes. Let's talk about white balance. So how would you set your white balance if you're in a room with lighting like this? As you can see, these lights are on the warm side as are those over there. Would you set your white balance so that those colors look natural or as they are like this? Or would you set them like this so that colors look more natural as in white things are white versus white things being a little bit on the warm or yellow or orange side? But then what do you do, let's say if you've got lights like this in the background, which the lights in the kitchen are kind of daylight lights, but with this white balance, those lights now look blue which is obviously very cool and that doesn't look natural. It definitely doesn't look like what I'm seeing with my eyes. So then what do you do when you have two different colors of light? How do you set your white balance? So now I'm in the kitchen under the daylight lights and uh, everything looks pretty natural given the white balance I have set, but now look in the background. Those lights in the background are very yellow, which, I mean, that's kind of what those lights look like, but is this how you would set your white balance given this scenario because you certainly wouldn't do this would you because now i look all blue this is the same white balance as earlier i mean those lights now look more natural but now i look really blue over here so what's the answer now my instinct is to set my white balance to match the colors of the light of the room that i'm in so if i'm in this room i'm not going to set my white balance so that these lights look like white light i'm going to set my white balance so that these look like the warm light that they are but then I've also heard arguments that you should set your white balance to where all colors look natural and where white things look white, but that wouldn't work in this scenario, right? This is a gray card. A lot of people use this to help with setting exposure, but also with setting white balance. Let's see what happens if I set a custom white balance using this gray card in this uh, warm lighting. All right, so now my white balance should be set correctly for this lighting, but now the lights look white and uh, the kitchen is back to looking really blue. So is that correct? Should I always be using a gray card to set my white balance if I'm in lighting conditions like this? What are your thoughts? Because I honestly don't know the answer. Let me know, thank you. I'm a bit of a procrastinator.
burn myself. <sighs> I did it.